Hi there, I'm Philip Eidson, the founder of Art of Procurement. And at Art of Procurement, we help procurement professionals like you plan and deliver change with confidence. Whether it's through the mapping and prioritization of your change journey, securing the subject matter expertise that you need to help you along the way, or assisting you and your team to take action on what they learn and what's really important is on also what they already know. And of course, a big part of what we do is this weekly podcast where we share strategies and tactics that aim to inspire and help elevate your change journey. I want to thank you for joining me today. Let's go straight into the show. Hi there, and welcome to episode 240 of The Art of Procurement. Before I introduce today's guest, I did just want to share a couple of different things. First, we just finalized our 2019 media partnership with ProcureCom. We just did that earlier in the week. And as a result, Art of Procurement listeners who are practitioners can receive 25% off their ticket for any ProcureCon North America event. So if you are interested in that, you're thinking about going to ProcureCon, you can check out the entire calendar of events this year uh, along with details about the discount code and those are all at a single page that we have it's artofprocurement.com slash procurecon that's artofprocurement.com slash procurecon secondly i wanted to just remind you that we're in the midst of what we believe is the very first crowdfunding campaign for a procurement product for it's for our 60 minute catalyst lunch and learn sessions so by crowdfunding we're actually able to significantly reduce the cost of the program It's just $2,500 for 10 built-for-you lunch and learn sessions. So if that sounds of interest, you want to go and check out the crowdfunding campaign, you can go to artofprocurement.com slash kickstarter. That's artofprocurement.com slash kickstarter. And that campaign runs until March the 8th, 2019. Now today on the show, I'm delighted to welcome Matt Clark. Matt is the president and COO of CoreCentric, and CoreCentric provides a suite of services and technologies across AP, across billing, and across procurement. And I've come to know CoreCentric just over the past couple of years, really, through their acquisition of SourceOne Management Services. And if you're following the P2P news, you may have seen that they entered into an agreement to purchase the P2P software provider Determine last week. And so in our conversation, I asked Matt to share Concentric's procurement strategy, particularly related to the recent news about Determine. We then dive into the accounts payable and procurement relationship and explore ways in which we as procurement can actually more effectively partner with the accounts payable team so that we can help them essentially to help us. I think that empathy and understanding the challenges of the functions that we work with is so important. So I really wanted to deep dive into the hearts and the mind of the AP team, figure out how we were aligned and how we could best work with each other. Now, before I go into the interview, I do just want to say that we had some mic problems. Um, I recorded this on-site at CoreCentric Symposium last week, and it just means that um, I had to amplify the voices, so you're just going to hear a little bit more background noise than normal in the interview. I don't think it takes away from anything, but if you're hearing that, I just wanted to let you know why. All right, so let's go into the discussion, and I started by asking Matt if he could provide just a little bit more background on CoreCentric's evolution, building up to the purchase of SourceOne and the agreement to purchase Determine. Sure. So CoreCentric was founded in the in the late 1990s, really uh, around the concept of trying to optimize you know the B2B transaction interaction between buyers and sellers. That was the simple kind of principle it was founded upon. Mm-hmm. And um, our founder, Doug Clark, uh, spent a lot of time actually in the truck transportation industry, and he saw a, a gap in terms of um, larger entities in that space having a serious advantage over medium and smaller entities in that they had better technology, yep. better procurement talent, yep. and more purchasing leverage. And he said, I think there's a way to kind of level the playing field. And so he came up with this concept of saying, I'm going to go out and you know kind of band together these medium and, and smaller uh, uh, customers and then go to you know national uh, suppliers um, with national distribution networks and say, you know, can we put together some programs that will allow these, you know, allow these customers to kind of level the playing field with yeah. their larger competitors? And the one big differentiator in, in that concept that was kind of differentiated from what other people were doing with kind of marketplaces and things of that nature was 
determining what was going to have value to the supplier as well. So it wasn't a one-sided equation of, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to create a solution for the buy side without kind of thinking about the supply side. So the secret sauce was really saying, not only are we going to put these programs together and bring benefit to the suppliers from kind of a single channel for marketing, single channel for billing, but saying, look, we're going to take the credit position here. We're going to yep. take uh, the credit risk. We're going to um, you know, manage the billing. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to pay you on time every time without deductions, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of what's going to happen on the buy side of the equation, and let us worry about that. So that was a tremendous value add to the yeah. suppliers, and that really got the flywheel going. And so that was the original founding principle was to provide these programs. Um, so you're for, providing a lot of trade financing for yeah, these so, smaller. Yeah, and that was, that was the big differentiator. And so the suppliers loved it, the buyers loved it, and the flywheel just got going from there. So that was the original founding principle, and that was you know the extent of our involvement was, you know, going to customers, and some of them would use one program, some of them used twenty programs. It was yeah. very menu driven, uh, but but that was how we grew the original business. And then from being in the middle of those transactions, we really saw that we could do much much more than we were doing. So. It started as really programmed design for companies that owned and operated fleets. And then we said, well, this formula would work if we went into kind of indirect categories. Yeah. And same principles, go find yeah. some, some good indirect suppliers that would see the value in the model. And so we expanded our program portfolio. Mm -hmm. And then we started seeing, okay, there's, there's opportunities on the AP side. So we yeah. were managing the billing for a small segment of you know, these customers that were buying through these programs. And we said, okay, Let's, uh, you know, our, we had customers coming to us and saying, yeah. I love how you're, you're invoicing me. It's clean. It's mm -hmm. easy. Can you help me with the rest of my invoicing? Right. That's a mess. And so that's how we started. Always provides a good opportunity yeah, when, you, yeah, exactly. when folks are coming to you asking for so help. So then we were like, all right, we got to get serious about this whole AP automation, AP workflow thing. And it was really starting to emerge in the early 2000s. And so we, you know, you sit there like anything else and we were making build by partner decision. We said, okay, we, we either got to build a much more robust solution or we got to go out and buy one. And yeah. so. Then we went out in the marketplace and found an AP automation solution. We were able to acquire a product that became our platform in that space. Mm -hmm. So we started to grow the whole AP side. Yep. And then same thing on the flip side. You know, The suppliers were coming to us and saying, it's so clean, the billing through your process. Can you help me with the rest of my billing? It's right. a mess. I'm not, you know, we stink at billing. It's not a core competency. So then we started getting involved on the billing solution side of things. So that's all kind of fast forward to where we are today. And really our, our message in the marketplace is that you know, we want to put ourselves in the, as many, in the middle of as many B2B transactions as we possibly can, mm -hmm. optimize it for both sides of the equation, both the seller and the buyer, regardless of who brought us to the party, yeah. and um, really say, you know, we're going to optimize how companies purchase, pay, and get paid. So it's a very simple way of saying, you know, we're going to help in procurement, we're going to help yeah. in AP, we're going to help in AR. Yeah. Sometimes we're going to address one of those areas for a company, sometimes we're doing all three, uh, and, and it's really all about combination of technology, um, services, and consulting. Mm -hmm. Uh, that we're bringing to the table to to, to generate that optimization, right. create that optimization. And it's great to actually grow with your clients. So yes. I'm sure yeah. that you have clients who were early adopters in the very early days yep. who are now, you've got this whole suite of solutions that support yep. them as you have grown and they've grown. Yeah, it's awesome, you. especially coming to you know, our, our customer symposium uh, that we're at right now. Um, you know, you, you relationships that are 15, yeah. 20 years old and you know somebody that started off as you know, a purchaser of Michelin tires mm -hmm. <laughs> through our, our original Michelin program. And now they're doing 20 plus programs. We're doing AP automation, you know, it just, it's the- It's like the part of the family as yeah, well. Exactly, yeah, so it's- So more recently, um, you know, nine months ago, you acquired Source One mm -hmm. Management Services. Uh, that's a name that will be familiar to a lot of folks in the procurement sure. space. Um, they're a strategic procurement consultancy. And then just a couple of days ago, at least as we record this, you entered into a uh, definitive agreement to acquire the source to pay and contract management software provider, Determine. I just wonder if you could share a little bit of your thinking behind sure. those moves. Yeah, so both moves obviously very strategic in our view and um, you know, the, the source one opportunity being pretty unique in the sense that um, you know, we, uh, we looked at what we were doing in the procurement world and we, we were saying you know, it's somewhat narrowly focused. So when we go to talk to a customer, you know, what we had to talk about as it related to procurement was, okay, we have this portfolio of programs. Um, we think there's value in you using some or all of them. Yeah. But if a customer looked at those programs and said, you know, I'm, I'm doing okay on my own, like I, you know, I'm comfortable with where my programs are at, we didn't have much else to talk about. So it was a very kind of bottom-up yeah. approach to a customer to say, here, look at our menu of programs. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this one. You know, let's talk about office supplies. Yeah. And then they're like, you know, what, whatever. We already have a deal yeah, for that. Good. Like, yeah. And then it was like, all right, the conversation ends there. Yeah. And so 
Yeah, the, the source one opportunity was unique in that I, you know, I, I kind of stepped back and looked at it and said, you know, in order for us to grow at, you know, the value proposition and what we're doing in procurement, we need to be taking this from a more kind of top-down mm -hmm. uh, approach. And I, you know, I, I looked at it and I said, the best way to do that is, you know, what, what procurement leaders are looking for is somebody to help them with their strategy, right? Yep. And part of that strategy is going to be potentially... There's some execution on the end of it. Yeah, but. procurement programs, technology, yeah. services. Uh, and so I looked at the Source One opportunity and the more I got to know what they were doing and how they were doing it, and you know, it was differentiated to me from yep. what other consultants, procurement consultants, were out there doing. I said, "This is a perfect fit for you know where we want to go." And, and it's it's in short, relatively short period of time, it has been a game changer for mm -hmm. us. I mean, we're you know we're leading with you know the, the procurement consultancy, the expertise, yep. you know, earning that trusted advisor status, yep. and then working hand in hand with the customer to say, "Let's put a roadmap to get you from where you are." to where you need to be as yeah. a procurement operation to be best in class yeah. and then taking that journey with the customer. Fast forward to the agreement we just entered into to acquire to determine, you know, our strength from a platform perspective has been mostly focused on kind of the back end of the transaction. Mm -hmm. So AP automation, payments, yeah. uh, that's where our kind of bailiwick has been. We, um, you know, we, we identified a need again, just much like when we first got involved in AP automation. Look, if we're gonna be a serious player in this yeah. space, we need to have a platform. Um, you want end-to-end. Yeah, end that, to end. yeah that, that has the full end-to-end -end capabilities uh, so that when we're taking that customer on that journey, we can you know, provide the right technology that will help support you mm -hmm. know, the overarching strategy. So we see that uh, determined platform as one that has you know, all the pieces that we think is necessary to have kind of a full source to pay, contract lifecycle yeah. management uh, capabilities that really rounds out our solution offering. So. Yeah, you know, we think we have a uh, you know, if, if and when the deal closes, we think we have a pretty differentiated offering which combines you know an end-to-end -end technology platform, you know, a true you know best-in-class consultancy yeah. shop, and then lots of services around it. Yeah, a GPO for lack of a better term yeah. with programs that can deliver tangible value, uh, programs that we own and control and, yeah. and design, and then also our willingness and ability to get into the financial flow. Uh, which helps, like I said, optimize both for the supply side and mm -hmm. the buy side. You know, put all those pieces together, it's a, yeah. it's a pretty differentiated and, and pretty complete, comprehensive model. Yeah, and you're starting to have different, um, w different tools, if you will, or different, um, different ways you can help people depending on where they are on the transformation journey. Exactly. So you can help them as they grow because yeah. you're bringing in other uh, offerings as you start to build a... And, and that's a great point you make there, which is, you know, I think the mistake that a lot of folks make is that you know they're, they're taking a cookie cutter approach to all opportunities. So yeah. they're going to talk to potential customers and they're saying, "Here's our formula," and you know that's where I think it's key to have that consultancy element because the the very first step is kind of assessing where you're at, and depending on where you're at, the need might be different. You mm -hmm. know, step one is not going to be the same for. You no. know, a Fortune 500 company as it is for a company that's you know just getting started and, yeah. and hitting a you know big growth. Yeah, I mean, they may be the at the same place. Are, are all different. Yeah, so, they may be yeah. even at the same place in the transformation journey, but what's come before right, exactly. has been completely different. So exactly. it kind of contextualizes yeah. what the need is. Yeah. Um, I want to go into talk about accounts payable, sure. uh, given that that's an area that is um, certainly one of the strengths that you have. It's where you've got a lot of background. It's also where alignment with procurement is really yeah. important. And I often think that um, it's one of those relationships where we don't necessarily, where either of us don't know what the other one does. Right. And we, I'm sure, think about what they do in the most simplest yeah. of terms. You know, like an AP person probably thinks procurement just buys something, right. and we think AP just uh, pays for something. Yeah. Yeah. And there's obviously a lot more in those black sure. boxes. Um, I wonder, in your experience, what does best-in-class alignment between procurement and AP actually look like? Yeah, sure. It's funny. I, I spoke about this, so I spoke about kind of four emerging trends mm -hmm. in, in the world of procurement and finance at our at our symposium here yesterday. And uh, one of those four emerging trends was the need for you know better collaboration between you know procurement and finance. Yeah. And I threw a stat up on this slide that I think caught a lot of people's attention. You know, ninety uh, ninety percent of companies would self assess that they don't have yeah that they're not aligned any collaboration between yeah. procurement and finance. And then I, I put a uh, uh, mirror image stat up there that said alignment between procurement and finance, um, you know, misalignment between procurement and finance is leaving 60% of operational right. savings on the All table. All the savings leakage as a so result of it. I was talking to a bunch of business leaders in the room and saying, 
you know, we, we, we kill to find solutions that are going to mm -hmm. create 60% operational savings. Yep. And uh, here we are, something totally in our own control as business leaders to do. You know, we got we to gotta be doing this. So from in terms of like best in class collaboration, you know, I really think it starts from, and this is what I, you know, that's the so what of what I, what I said. It's so I said, well, all right, we all agree this is important. Now, you know, now what do you do? So, you know, I, I really talked about looking at it from a top down perspective. So I think where things get off the rails uh, from a collaboration perspective is everybody comes at it from their own kind of perspective, yeah. a very bottom up perspective. Yeah. So it's okay, this is the way I've always done it. These mm -hmm. are kind of the blocking and tackling things I do day to day. Well, these are the things I do. And what I really encourage is for people to say, okay, let's take a step back and let's not try to jam, you know, yeah. two kind of historical, you know, processes and, and groups together and just try and mesh it. This is our way, that's our right. way. Let's um, get together and take a very top down business strategy approach to say, okay, what would you know, what would kind of utopia look like from an end-to-end -end perspective? Because really, you know, procurement and finance are, are representing, you know, two ends of a life cycle of an engagement with a mm -hmm. supplier, right? You know, procurement's, you know, mostly involved on the front end, uh, you know, setting up contracts, yep. you know, sourcing, all that stuff, putting those things in place. And then really finance is responsible for the, you know, kind of day-to-day -day execution of making sure that, you know, that when the transactions are taking place that, you know, they're, yep. they're getting paid, bills are getting paid. And so, and making sure that those savings are actually right. ring fenced and exactly. are taken away from the bottom. Yeah, line. the actualization of the yeah. you know the, the work that was done by procurement is being done. And so, you know, stepping back and saying, okay, what would it look like from a people, process, technology perspective to be you know optimal? You mm -hmm. know, what would an optimal uh, optimal situation look like for the company as a whole? And then, how can we you know work together to identify the right technology and have make sure both parties are represented in that process yep. to make sure that it's covering what's needed? And, and really stressing, and this isn't kind of self promotion, but I said, you know, it's really important to engage outside uh, third party resources, yeah. you know, like a group like Source One to come in and, and really kind of explain because that, that's half the battle is you know again like bringing people together isn't understanding it? Uh -huh. you know having somewhat of a mediator come in and say yeah. look uh, we understand what the challenges are kind of you know end to end here we can help you kind of yeah. take this journey and so you know from a technology perspective you know from a from a process perspective top down approach you know really kind of reimagining the process mm -hmm. and then working together to kind of develop that uh, that process and it's extremely critical the other thing I talked about yesterday was you know, in our in our discussions with the supplier side of the equation, it's actually one of the number one frustrations from a supplier's perspective is the misalignment between procurement and finance. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it's thought of as kind of a between our four walls issue, yeah. but it actually permeates out to the supply side because suppliers almost feel like they're managing two different customers in one, right? So they've they deal yeah. with procurement, they deal with finance. Procurement and finance aren't talking to each other, so they're like, I have to now manage, I have to play mm -hmm. referee for your, you know, your internal <laughs> organization. Exactly. No, I feel exactly. that as a supplier now, having yeah. had years on the um, the practitioner side, yeah. and in larger companies now that I have my own business, yeah. I feel that acutely yeah, because yeah. you work with procurement, you know, to help you uh, to contract, to help you do the job and the work that you've been contracted to do. Because what I'm doing is helping procurement people. Right. But then when it comes time to getting paid, yeah, it's a whole different <laughs> ball game. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I always knew when I was a practitioner the challenges of getting paid on time. Yeah. But I did I was I motivated to help suppliers solve that? Right. I'm not sure if yeah, I yeah. was because yeah. it wasn't acute enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. and now I'm on the other side of the table yeah. I realise how important <laughs> cash flow is and how yeah. difficult it even is to get paid yeah. on time. Yeah. And so you find that you're just shooting off emails right. into an abyss of right. like I'm gonna copy everyone in procurement right. yeah. that I know. <laughs> I'm gonna copy everybody somebody in finance <laughs> yeah. and the general AP desk. Right. Yeah. yeah, and hopefully someone's gonna do yeah. something about it. Yeah. So uh, I feel the pain. Not an uncommon. Uh, not an uncommon <laughs> I feel the pain of the yeah. suppliers now. Um, you mentioned about kind of understanding each other, and yeah. I think empathy is really, really important. Yeah. To um, and it's something that it's not because we deliberately don't look right. to yeah. try and be empathetic. Yeah, it's not malicious. It just yeah. you, it's just not the mindset sometimes yeah. because we've got our own priorities. Yeah. So I want to go inside inside the like heart and the mind of an accounts payable leader, sure. so that we as procurement can understand that a little bit yeah. more. Um, what is keeping them up at night? So I think it's it's you know I think one of the things you'll hear consistently from AP folks is you know they always feel like kind of they're the last ones to they're the last ones to know yeah and so that's like a little bit of that mindset you know 
procurement's maybe gone out and negotiated a contract, a new contract with a new supplier, and you know maybe they replaced a supplier that um, you know was very smooth and frictionless from a from a billing and yeah. processing perspective with somebody that maybe isn't as smooth, and so you know they, the classic case, you know they go and negotiate a you know a slightly better price with a new supplier, but not really understanding kind of the back end mm -hmm. cost of you know, of efficient that. billing yeah. and, you know, maybe inconsistent pricing and things of that nature. So I think from the AP side of things, you know, finance people in general are kind of, you know, logic brain people. So they want, you know, predictability, yeah. they want consistency, you know, they want to make sure that, you know, that they, they don't like surprises, you know, it's just the nature of, mm -hmm. of those, those folks and those individuals. And so I think that's, you know, that's where, you know, it, I think, at the end of the day, it's communication. That's what they're really yeah. looking for, so that they can do their job. I mean, they, yeah. they they really, at the end of the day, are trying to do their job, which is you know be that gatekeeper, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that you know that funds are going out on time, um, that the the right funds are going out on time, and that you know that these transactions are are legit and that are valid, and and being able to do that without you know the name of the game in AP now is being you know, is being able to grow the business without having to grow your overhead. So yeah. every every AP department is trying to look for ways to say, okay, we're not, you know, we're not the place that gets, you know, to pile up resources. You know, when the business grows, the expectation is we have five people now, we're going to double our invoice yeah. volume, but we're still you got six people now. Yeah, you, get, <laughs> you might get one person or maybe an intern or yeah. like a part-time person. And so, you know, that's the other thing that really uh, keeps, you know, AP up at night is like, okay, they're being... Uh, you know, it's very de demanding what yeah. they're being asked to do, and they're being asked to, to, you know, support more and more volume with with less, you know, less relatively speaking mm -hmm. people. So that's where kind of process efficiencies, automation, you know, and things kind of working smoothly yeah. are so critical. Because one exception that takes somebody off track for an hour or two hours, you know, can can cripple the the throws a spanner in the whole exactly. system. So, um, so that's you know that's where you know the the focus is on you know. The, the name of the game is, you know, we want to be focusing in AP on exceptions um, and we want, you know, 90 plus percent of the transactions to go through without, yeah. you know, without much, you know, interaction from... from yeah, you no know, touch, yeah, basically. Exactly. Um, one of the stats that you shared in your presentation yesterday that jumped out to me, uh, it jumped out to me because I think sometimes we in procurement feel like we have the same challenge. And that's that uh, one in 10, or only one in 10 businesses see a strategic role for their AP department. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that is something that keeps an AP leader up at yeah, night. It's exactly. like, how do I become yeah. relevant? But I'm interested in what you see. You know, what does the one in 10 that is strategic yeah. or is seen as strategic, what are they doing differently? Sure. So I think, yeah, when I, when I brought that stat up yesterday, I followed that up with, you know, couple of what I think are key points. One would be the ones that are viewing it as strategic are understanding the value of the data that the back office is producing or sitting on really. Yep. And, you know, have actually made a shift towards, you know, much like, you know, I always make the analogy, much like sports teams have done, they've understood the uh, value in data analytics yep. and having data scientists and algorithm yep. experts and people like that on staff. The people that are seeding their back office with those types of people mm -hmm. are the ones that are taking that you know, treasure trove of data and turning it into actionable. Yeah, they're being proactive. Stuff. So when you start doing that, it totally changes the perception yeah. and, and it kind of blows people's minds. Like I talk to AP, you know, CFOs and accounts payable managers and I'm like, have you ever thought about your next hire for your department? Mm -hmm. You know, instead of, you know, just being kind of a regular admin type person, somebody that has a passion, you know, that can do the admin a work. A statistician or yeah. you know, somebody who likes to play with right. numbers. So they can do the work, they can they can execute the, the yeah. job, but while they're doing the job, they're sitting there thinking yeah. about what can be done, you know, kind of next level yeah. uh, with the data. So that's a big, you know, you start doing things like that all of a sudden, you start producing stuff for the rest of the organization from that data. Mm -hmm. That'll change the perception right there. Straight <laughs> away, because one of the biggest challenges that we have in procurement, you know, yeah. when we think about doing spend analytics, yeah is the quality of the data, and right. it's quality of the data as it's keyed from invoices. Yep, exactly. Now, there's education on our side to help the suppliers understand what they should be putting on an invoice right. so we can actually better use that data. Yep. But then the, the data that we get comes out of whatever's keyed, right. in, and that often isn't good data. Yep, exactly. So that's one of the, the biggest, um, not a challenge, I think it's an opportunity uh, and it's another for opportunity procurement and AP to, to work yeah, together, yeah, exactly. is to enhance data as opposed yeah. to us saying, well, the data's just bad, right. so I can't do anything with it. Well, actually, how do we both work together right. to make the yeah, data better? Just throwing it over the fence back and forth, you know, yeah. let's get together and figure out because often, you know, 
the the combination of you know purchase order data, invoice data, you know synthesizing that and you know putting those two pieces together can mm -hmm. get you better quality data so you can do some more with it. The other way that I see you know kind of the back office uh, AP function uh, becoming more strategic is really what can be done from a, a payment modality and a payment timing uh, perspective. Right. So there's so many ways to get creative. Uh, that aren't you know one-sided either. There's ways to collaborate with suppliers. There's ways to interject third parties into the mix, to to really kind of um, relieve the friction. You know the, the mm -hmm. classic friction. Suppliers want to get paid yep. earlier or on time. You know buyers are trying to you know, push it out with the yeah, seventy-five days on ninety or hundred and twenty. The friction you have there. Yeah. So there's there's lots of things you can do with you know virtual credit cards with you know supply chain finance providers. Uh, that can create a win-win for yeah. both parties, but also create a, a revenue stream yeah. uh, for the for the AP department that then can be deployed to you know to, to do other things. Yeah. With. So that's another another way to become strategic. Yeah, and as a small business, again, I mean, we love programs like yeah. that because it just allows you to get your hands on, right. especially when you're working with big companies, because the bigger companies are typically the ones who are pushing out the payment terms yeah. further and further. Yeah. And you know, you could talk about having more innovative programs for small businesses where you're paying them in a week or yeah. something because it's really a drop in the bucket in yeah. terms of your cash, you know, the ca working yeah. capital position, but at least having the opportunity for them to buy down the cash. And I always say it's amazing, you know, people, you know, people get on the kind of accelerated payment. That's again, like you said, that's a great option for certain, certain businesses. But, you know, even, you know, one of our founding principles when we started in this, in, in our space was just paying on time. Yeah. You know, like before you even talk about acceleration, you know, okay, you have 30 day terms. How often are you actually getting paid yeah. in 30 days? When you go to a supplier and say, look, I can guarantee you're going to pay it on day 30 yeah. every single time. Yeah. They're like, hallelujah, praise the right. Lord. <laughs> because at least they can, put, they can yeah, plan for predictability that. Because yeah. you have predictability of cash flow and being able to know that from this particular buyer, I'm going to get paid on. That's, yeah. that's real tangible value yeah. for a supplier. And that value will come back to you in other ways, whether it's better pricing, yep. uh, whether it's better service. You know, yep. those things make a difference. No, that, absolutely, because it's the relationship. relationship. Yeah. You know, because I think of eighty percent of our invoices, I would say, as a small business, yeah. are paid late. Yeah. And there's not really that much you can do about right. it except yeah. I mean, continue yeah, to yeah, throw you're emails. You're that in. choice to say, you know, yeah, you, you be the squeaky wheel, and yeah. you know, if it gets really bad, your choice is okay. Do I, you know, right. do I end this relationship? But often, when you don't really want to do that. You're not going to do that. It has to be no. really bad for you to, you know, yeah. to get to that point. So. Um, so that's one of the challenges I see. That I wonder how we in procurement can help. AP is giving visibility into payment dates because yep. I feel like that's usually a really manual process and it's emails essentially like when's this person going to get paid and it takes maybe it takes a couple of emails but yeah. it's just a highly manual process there's no oh there's very few ways that I can go and say okay I know I'm going to get paid on this day yeah. again so at least I can plan even if it's not my payment day right. at least I got an idea of where I yeah. am in the system yeah one of the things that I you know I really recommend on that front is and this is another way that AP and, and procurement can collaborate is really getting AP's input when you're doing any kind of supplier scorecarding. So, yeah. you know, evaluating how the total relationship is functioning. So obviously procurement's got their own set of metrics that they want to measure and, and scorecard on, but then getting input from AP to say, okay, how clean are the transactions? Um, you know, how, how, you know, how, how many issues or disputes are you having to yeah. file and you know, all those things. And then you start to scorecard that out. And we've seen some really cool stuff on that front where, you know, you kind of net it out to a total kind of supplier value score. Mm -hmm. And when you're measuring kind of the whole thing, you know, ease of interfacing, you know, the, you know, the cleanliness of the billing, the reduction of friction, it's amazing when you start to stack rack it and you're like, wow, our best supplier is actually this supplier because right. you know, competitive pricing, yeah. you know, this, 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 this. And they're at the top of the list, and you look at some that are at the bottom of the list, and it's a real eye opener. You're like, wow. You change the way that you deal yeah. with that you and then, and perhaps again, manage some of those really suppliers. It's a really good holistic conversation yeah. when procurement goes back to supplier to say, look, your product is good. You know, we're pretty happy with your pricing, but you're, you're expensive to work with. Because yeah. we're, you know, money's flying out the back door because we're having, you know, having to manage exceptions. Yeah. You, but, yeah. And then that changes the, the dialogue with that supplier and yeah. it makes it a better, healthier relationship. You know. As a, as a whole. So I just got one last question because I know that um, our time is coming short here. Um, and it's just as you think back to the symposium we've had here in Orlando the last couple of days, yeah. um, is there a particular aha moment that you've taken away from something that you've heard or somebody that you've spoken to or a piece of wisdom perhaps that is going to help you, you know, as you go back to the sure. office uh, on Monday? Yeah, I think probably, you know, that we, we have a great lineup of speakers and I have, you know, pages and pages of notes <laughs> that I've taken here. Yeah. But, 
I think the, the overall um, message from a gentleman by the name of Michael Tracy, uh, who spoke yesterday, and he really spoke on kind of, you know, transactional processing disruption, mm -hmm. and really kind of, I think, stretched a lot of people's mind. And it really, you know, it was, it was encouraging for me because it's kind of supporting a lot of what we were talking about doing, yeah. kind of the holistic uh, view of both the buy and the uh, buy and supply side, you know, the optimization of the transaction and simplification. Mm -hmm. You know, he was very, uh, the underlying theme was that we've built this system that is way overly complicated. Yeah. Pricing schemas and ways in which, you know, transactions are pro just totally over-engineered and he kind of compared it, you know, everybody compares everything to Amazon, but yeah. he kind of compared it to Like Amazon. three clicks and you're done. Right. Yeah, and he's like, you know, they just removed all of the complexity out of yeah. it and so, you know, you'll buy stuff off of Amazon just because it's so damn easy to do. Right. You, know, it's you like, already bought it before you got yeah, time to like, make ah, it. You know, this is cool. I just have to hit a button yeah. and it shows up on my doorstep later that day. So he's like, it's you know, there's there's definitely bigger challenges in B two B. You know, so he wasn't unrealistic in saying like, you know, it's easy we all to need get to go there. do that. Yeah, but he was basically making the point that you know, from a supply chain perspective, from a transaction processing perspective, in the next five years, there's going to be really transformational change in terms of removing complexity out of the mm -hmm. process and saying. Look, I don't need to have 900 pricing rules. Let me just give my best price to a good group of customers, yeah. and you know, create seamless, easy to do transactions. And then talked about kind of the transformation that happened, you know, when Dell, you know, Michael Dell really kind of took all the intermediaries mm -hmm. out of the, you know, the process of delivering, you know, computers and, and technology, and, and you know, really looking kind of on a broad basis and saying, okay, you know, distribution networks are going to change, yeah. and supply chains are going to change, and you know, the value of like a distributor, you know, is being minimalized because yeah. of, you know, just in time capabilities and those sorts of things. Nobody having inventory anymore and, and just, you know, having what you need when you mm -hmm. need it based on predictive analytics. So a lot of, you know, really mind stretching things, yeah. but, but exciting stuff as well, too, to think about how we can play a role. Yeah, in, and the opportunities that whole, of that, that, that drives. Yeah. Well, Matt, I know that it's uh, time for you to uh, head off to your next session. Um, just one easy question. If, if listeners would like to just check out Carcentric, learn a little bit more sure. about you, where's the best place that they go? I think, uh, you know, like most places, uh, you know, start with the website. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great material on there, a lot of great explanations of what we're doing, you know, videos, customer testimonials that give kind of real life, you know, examples of, yep. you know, how we're helping businesses. And yep. then from there, you know, we, we love to get engaged and start the dialogue and, and very much believe and kind of diagnose before we prescribe. Mm -hmm. So. You know, it just starts with a conversation yeah. and then, you know, we can, we can take that journey from there. All right. Well, thank you very much, Matt, for yeah, joining thank me. You. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. I'm going to uh, include a link to the website on our show notes. Those will be at procurement.com. But thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty. Hi there. I want to thank you for tuning in to today's podcast. You can check out all of our back catalog at artofprocurement.com slash podcast, where you can also subscribe to our newsletter to make sure that you never miss an episode. And if you found value in today's show, I'd love if you would tell a peer or perhaps go and rate and review by going to artofprocurement.com slash review. Word of mouth really is the best way to help the podcast grow. And if you're able to do either one of those things, I would truly appreciate it.